goodness. Irk. Irk. Oh gosh, my desk is messy! <laughs> Wait, let me adjust this. This mirror. Hold up. Get the duck guy in view. Because why not? And hello! Hi, everybody! How are we doing? Why is my neck loss so messed up? Um, it's always freaking twisted. It's always freaking twisted. Um, okay. Also, I feel like this pigtail is like way thicker than this pigtail. Hold up, hold up. Redoing the, redoing them. Redoing them. Whop. Okay, I think I transferred over too much. There. Okay, one is getting retied. Oh wait, hold on. It's a little messed up. It's a little messed up. Where is it? I can't. There's like I don't have good depth perception with this camera. Um, but hello everybody. How are you doing? Um. Okay. I think. Um, other side. Arg. Sorry. Hair. Girl problems. Girl problems right now. LOL. Almost done. Hi from Germany. 3 a.m. Nice. Oh my god. It's so late for you. I guess I've been doing pretty late night streams though, to be honest. Not very corporate job friendly, but. I have just the most fucked up sleep schedule right now. <laughs> it's so bad, guys. It's so bad. Like, I don't know. Um, okay, hold on. Wait, let me say hi to everyone. Um, hi, Dola. Hi, Jay. Hi, Pass the Rock. Hi, Jay Lopez. Hi, Planic. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, Shogun. Hi, Slippity. Hi, Jamil. Hi, Jason. Hi, Danny. Hi, Infernal. <gasps> Thank you. Well, Ah, 12 watch streak! Ayo, 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 ayo. Thank you also for the sticky bomb. I think they gave out more credits to y'all by the BT dubs. BT dubs, if you already used your sticky bomb credits, I think they gave out extra. Um, but anywho, um, Kobe also, thank you so much for the tier one. Happy eight months, I appreciate that. Um, hi Joe, hi Jules, hi Toku. hi Lamar, hi Industry, hi Sick Bro, hi Kobe again, hi Matt. I think I said hi to everyone. Hello. Hello. How are we doing today? It's a Thursday. So, you guys having a good Thursday? It's like almost the weekend. Do you guys consider Friday to be the weekend? I feel like some people do. Personally, I don't really. I feel like, I don't know. I don't think Friday's the weekend. <laughs> but I guess if you're like, ah, yay, thank you so much. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was just telling them, I was like, I think you guys have some extra credits. So, uh, exclamation sticky bomb if you guys want to make utilize it. It's super quick to make an account, by the way. You can just, like, log in with your Twitch. So, it takes, like, two seconds. Um, what's SOD? Season of Discovery. It's, like, the new thing that they added from World of Warcraft for World of Warcraft. But guys, look at my socks. <laughs> Wait, why are they like, they're kind of crooked. They're kind of crooked. Hi, Nate. Hello. Hi, Poppy. Yeah, these are my socks. These are the socks that we're rocking with today. I feel like I want them to be on stream, but if my seat could recline, I could sit like this, but this seat does not recline. So it's really, it's really pushing me forward. But I guess we're, we're having good posture. It's a forcibly good posture. Oh, I think if I sit like this. Do I look weird sitting like this? Let me, let me move a little. Because if I like push back on my desk, I can get it to recline a little bit. <laughs> I'm like, why? I don't know. There's got to be a way. Maybe, if, do you think if I just keep pushing back, the tension will like ease up naturally or what? What are we thinking? <laughs> um, I do. All my bosses are off Friday through Sunday. Oh shit. Okay. Well, yeah. That's nice. See, I feel like if it's if it's a work day, it's not a weekend. That's what I say. I still say no. I literally looked it up. There's nothing. There's nothing. 
This chair was designed to be minimalistic, I guess. It's literally what it said. We still haven't seen what the chair looks like. Always something over it. Well, because remember I said, I was like, I felt like my other chair got dirty because, like, I don't know, I just sit in it and sweat in it a lot. And I didn't want that to happen to this chair. That's why now I have, like, a blanket over it. But, ready? Grand reveal! Oh, oh wow, that didn't come smoothly. Whoa! This is it. This is it. I think I did show it, Lamar, but I don't think, you, I don't know if you were here. But... We got the we got the white and gray frame with a matching gray. I wanted it to be all white, but they did not have that as an option, unfortunately. So gray and white were like the only it was like the lightest way I could make this chair. It was either that or blue and white, but honestly, I feel like my room doesn't really have a lot of blue in it, so I don't know. I felt like the the neutral gray would go with any decor I decide ultimately you know but yeah but now I will have a blanket over it most of the time and then I can wash the blanket and then this chair will stay in good condition there <laughs> um doo -doo -doo -doo. That's one argument on what wears springs down, more usage versus compressed. Okay, I'll just keep, I'll just keep pushing back and hopefully, eventually, um, <laughs> it'll just, it'll become easier to lean back, right? It just makes sense, totally. Not like these chairs are designed not to do that, you know, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> I wasn't here. I must have been on the pot. LOL. I'm always here on the pot. Just see chat through. Well, yeah, cause I, I showed, well, I showed people. Yeah. Well, I showed them when I first got it, but yeah, maybe you were just taking a huge, ginormous poop. Maybe that's what was going on. You were just like pooping your brains out, you know? <laughs> uh, gray looks better in this lighting, in my opinion. I don't know. I would have liked to have a white chair, but I have a white blanket on the chair. So now this is basically a white chair. I just feel like I'm going for like very pastel vibes in my room, which is perfect for the LED lights and that's why whenever I turn on the LED lights it looks like everything in my room is that color, which I kind of want. I feel like if I had super strong colors in this room, it would just look weird with the LEDs. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jellybean? Um, so you're like the mom in everybody's little room that's 80 years old and c covers all the furniture and things so it doesn't get dirty. And nobody ever knows what the furniture felt like. Um, I mean, if the furniture is, like, not cute, yeah, I'm gonna cover it. <laughs> Why not? I don't feel like it's necessarily... I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't really... I don't think this chair looks cute enough to be uncovered, I guess. Um, you're, like, legendary loot? Thank you. <laughs> I think. How does it... Is legendary the highest? I'm thinking of Fortnite. I don't know why. I know there's uncommon... Rare, epic, legendary. Um, Dr. Vandalay, thank you so much for the tier one. I appreciate that. Happy one year. Oh my gosh, happy one year. It's so exciting. Yeah. Um, after yesterday, a bunch of D and D and Pathfinder stuff started getting recommended to me for streams. Really? Interesting. I feel like, I, I feel like we weren't really doing anything like that though, right? Because it's just an ASMR stream. <laughs> Because for a second I was gonna be like, oh well, if it was like a we I did like a World of Warcraft stream, maybe that would make sense. But interesting. Most of the time, legendary is best. Have is there? Have you guys ever played a video game where legendary is not the best? I feel like in shooter games it goes to like immortal, divine hero. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> um, the real question is like how long should we chat before we game? I feel like I should also boot up the game early because since there's the update, I feel like it's gonna have to update for a little bit. Mythic, true. Rare, legendary, epic. I thought it was the other way around. Philo, philo, fiddle, philosophiddle. I thought it was, at least in Fortnite, isn't it the other way around in Fortnite? I'm literally just thinking of Fortnite right now. I literally can't think of any other video game. What is it in World of Warcraft? Is Richitoku in here? He would know. What's like 
because I've, I've gotten uncommon and I've gotten rare. I've never gotten anything higher than that. So I don't know what the loot categories are for... Um... Oh, we're still going in here! Rare Epic Legendary! All right, see, pretty standard. I I'd say Legendary trumps Epic in most games. There's crazy queue times. If you're going to try to get on the stream or server, I don't know if you even can. Might be full. Damn, really? I mean, we could just play... <laughs> I could just play my 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 character I was playing. Wait, okay, hold on. I think I actually need someone to kind of explain to me what Season of Discovery is. Is it like I play Season of Discovery or the game is just Season of like like if I play my old character, would I be able to do whatever Season of Discovery? <laughs> this is so stupid. I'm I, sorry. No, I'm being stupid. Um, but. Like, or do I have to, like, make... Oh, it's, like, classic with its own server, so I would have to make a new character? Hi, Heisuke. Hi. Hoskai. Um. I see. Well, yeah, we could see. When you, like, are, like, waiting to get into a server, is there, like, a wait time or no? Everyone is starting fresh. That means it's gonna be really hard to get kills and stuff, right? I mean, okay, we can see what the vibes are, but... Um... Hmm. So wait, yeah. Maybe we're just Toko, I feel like you know this. So if I'm, like, waiting to queue into a server, does it tell me how long the wait time is? Like, am I able to, like, check right now, for example? Because I could just wait in the queue, maybe, while uh, we chat. Or is it just like, I don't know. Like, we'll see. An estimate? Okay. That's not, that's better than nothing. Okay. Um, Let me just boot up the game. We're not going to play right now, obviously. But I do have to do the update. And... Oh. When I open the launcher, I guess it started updating. But, yeah. Maybe I can queue up. What's the, what's the streamer server? Is it the same one that I was playing on before? Ideally, yes. Ideally, yes, I want to be on the streamer server. <laughs> so that way, if I ever play with another streamer, my dream. Oh, I'm confused. Okay. Realm list. Seasonal. Oh, is it Shadow Strike? Is that the one that all the streamers are in? All of them are saying new, 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 and then Shadow Strike says hi. <laughs> um, shows your position in Q2. Oh shit, that's actually nice. They said it was Alliance Cr Crusader Strike, but you might want to double check. I mean, okay, TBA. It's not like I have any World of Warcraft streamer friends to play with, but like. <laughs> So, you know, I could just make it on a random server because it doesn't matter anyways, but I'm holding out for a hope that one day, one day, I will be playing World of Warcraft with another streamer. It's so great. We're questing together. We're not talking, we're talking with each other a little bit, but like, since we're both streaming, we're also like not talking to each other 24-7 so we can talk with our own chats. Like, <sighs> that'd be amazing. <laughs> anyways, a girl can dream, right? Um, I think streamer server is PvP, which means opposing factions can attack you while you're questing. Um, okay, well, Crusader Strike is RP PvP, and Shadow Strike is PvP. I just want to know what motherfuckers are on. Can I, like, bop into someone's stream? How do I- if I'm, like, watching- if I'm, like, watching a streamer, how can I know what server they're on? Can I not- do I just not know? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute! Who am I joking? Who am I joking, bro? I have friends. Crusader Strike is correct. I have multiple people that I see are on that server. Okay, amazing. Um, let me see if there's a cute. Oh yeah. Oh, holy shit, <laughs> bro. All right. Um. I'm only in Q position 3,101. There's only 3,100 people in front of me. 
<laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Got it. Hey, we down to 3,076. Uh, hey. Okay, actually, that was, like, pretty fast for moving, like, 30 spots. It's saying estimated wait time, 82 minutes, which honestly isn't bad because we can chat. Well, actually, 82 minutes. Hold on. That's, like, an hour and a half. Do we think it's going to be that long? I'm already at 3,053. <laughs> Here. Oh, I know what we can do. How do I... Damn, bro. Can I drag this... Ta can I drag my full screen World of Warcraft game to a different monitor, please? Is that possible? If I cover this... Hold on. I'm doing a little... Oh. Well, well it's display capture, actually. So, no. Uh, mini screen. Oh. I guess that was from when we had mochi cam set up. Go away! Um, make it windowed. Oh my gosh, that's so much work. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do a little, just a little witchcraft. I wanna have, like, you know, just, like, you guys, we can all watch it together on the screen. Um... Yeah. Add. Window source. Select my window. What? That's not my window. Oh. Because I'm blocking? Bitch. Bitch. You know I'm sexy. Oh, sorry. That's what we're listening to right now. What? Why is it not... Why is it not capturing? Um, bit confused, honestly. Why is it just frozen as myself? Okay, now I'll go to that. What? Oh my god, I mean, be freaking for real right now. Okay, we're gonna try out game capture. That one's gotta work. That one's got to work. Wow. Wow. Worked right away. Good job, Game Capture. I'm so proud of you. This this is where we at. Cool beans. Look at there. Oh, shit. Hello? lock oh my god oh my god okay i just need to start locking some of my assets in place <gasps> bro this is actually making me very mad just let me just let me drag this please thank you all right, guys, this is our cue. This this is what we're waiting on. This is about to be a moment of truth, though, because I'm going to drag my Streamlabs back to this monitor. Okay. I think it's working. Let me see it move. Okay, it's working. Amazing. Amazing. Um. Anyways, <laughs> do you play Mario Kart? I kind of want to beat your ass in it. Um, I mean, I play it for fun. I'm not like one of those try-hard motherfuckers in Mario Kart. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sometimes, sometimes people be taking Mario Kart way too seriously. I feel like Mario Kart is a game that you're supposed to like have fun with. <laughs> but let me think. What's a game that I'll take serious as hell though? Overcooked. Yeah, better take that seriously. Better take that seriously. Um, the normal server is better for a new player. Should I do it? Well, why not? Let's, well, if it's taking too long, okay, we'll see where we are in like 30 minutes. Because I feel like the clock looks like it's moving faster than it was. Look, we already went up 300 spots. People take a lot of games too seriously. You know what, Infernal? You are so right. You are so right about that. I feel like... Maybe this is more something that I feel like with 
dudes. I feel like my girl gamer friends are a little more cash. Yeah, maybe not though. One of my friends, I don't know. I feel like generally speaking, I like to play games for fun. Like, woohoo, yay. Like, I'm not trying to be, like, screaming, raging, having sweat dripping off of my brow, getting finger cramps. Like, <laughs> like, I'm just not trying to have that vibe, really. But I feel like a lot of people do have that vibe. <laughs> a lot of games have that vibe, I suppose. But I'm a cozy gamer myself. I like to game for fun. And honestly... <laughs> I guess I don't really like games that are like super muscle reflex based or anything like that. I don't really feel like that's, that's super fun. I just want to be immersed in a cool ass world, play a cool ass character, maybe follow a cool ass storyline. Like to me, I get okay, this is really getting to it. I think for me, video games are almost like a self insert book. Like instead of me like reading a show or watch, or me like watching a movie. Like, I feel like those are very passive and you're watching other people do it, but when you're playing the game and you're playing, like, as a character in this world, it's so much more fun! It's so much more fun, you know? <laughs> That's what I think. I feel like it's just fun to get, like, immersed in the world and, like, run around and, like, do shit and, like, whatever. I think that's why I gravitate towards, like, RPG and simulation games, like, the most, categoric categorically, because, I don't know, I feel like I like the element of being able to still like make your own choices within the game and like you know follow an interesting storyline literally the witcher i feel like a lot of games are are really good at, at being like that but like you can see how games like valorant or fortnite don't really fall into those categories i've seen plenty of girl gamer rage fortnite is a big one yeah but i feel like most girl Okay, here's what I'm gonna say. I feel like the girl gamer representation on Twitch is, like, not super representative of, like, the girl gamer population in general. I feel like there's a lot, at least for my opinion, because, like, I feel like I have a lot of friends in real life who, like, play games, like, girlfriends that play games, and most of them will play games like Sims and Stardew, like, Animal Crossing, like, all of that kind of stuff. One, I feel like those games, like, don't, people don't really stream those games. They're not, like, super exciting to watch. Like, people do stream those games, but it's not, like, like, there's not really a ton of streamers with thousands and thousands of viewers, tens of thousands of viewers, like, watching someone play Sims or Stardew, really. Like, maybe a few, but usually those are streamers that, like, grew doing something else. So anyways, yeah, that's number one. And second of all, I do feel like, I just feel like shooter games are just more, like, engaging for viewers to watch. So I feel like, there seems like there's a lot of girls that, I mean, there are a lot of girls that play, I'm not saying that girls don't play shooter games, but I guess from my experience, I feel like a majority of girls that I know in my real life that play games don't play shooter games. But I feel like they do well on Twitch, because first of all, I feel like most of Twitch viewers are men, like specifically gaming Twitch viewers, I feel like also, I feel like they're more likely to like watch a pretty girl do, a, do their favorite video game, which is likely a shooting game. Like, I don't know how many dudes are like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm just, I'm literally just brainstorming out here, but this is my speculative opinion and I'm just rambling about nonsense. Mass Effect Trilogy. The Mass Effect Trilogy was so good. So good. Um, goofy ah, where? What do you mean? Where what? Witcher 3 is one of my favorite games. I hear good things about Witcher 3. Oh, but see, that's another thing too, is like, I've never, ever, ever met a girl IRL that plays RPG games though. I know girls IRL that play shooter games. I know girls IRL that play cozy games. I know girls IRL that play like arcade style or like mobile games or whatever. But I have never in my entire freaking life met a girl in real life. Not like obviously at TwitchCon I met like female streamers and stuff. But, like candid, like canonically, I can't think of the right word, but <laughs> randomly just met a girl in real life who plays games and plays RPG games. Those are the ones that I'm convinced literally don't exist, except for like on Twitch or like, I don't know. They don't exist. I, that's what I think. <laughs> uh, I agree and the femmes are chatting in ASMR. Yeah, I'm like thinking about that. I'm like, cause obviously I know that like Twitch has female viewers, but like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the streamers 
like I feel I'm trying to think of like people that I know that have female dominated communities well first of all I think that women are more likely to be anonymous on the internet so I feel like it's kind of hard to tell with some people's communities like what they're dominated by I don't know man um <laughs> IRL, they are too busy playing RPG games. Those are the girls who stay inside and get really into it. Okay, well, I need them to go out into the world sometime so I can meet them, okay? Been doing ASMR. Yeah, true. I will say, if I ever go into a sexy man stream, I'm seeing, like, all the usernames are, like, Emily, Katie, Megan, like... But it's, like, that's if it's an attractive dude. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, categories that I feel, like, are maybe more dominated. I mean, obviously, the categories, like, Sims and Stardews. But I feel like those categories themselves are not as big as other categories. Probably, probably a lot of just chatting, though. I could see that being a thing. I used to play WoW way back in the day, and there were several women in my guild that never let anyone outside the guild know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I feel like because women are more likely to face harassment online, they are therefore more likely to be anonymous online and like not share their gender, like not have like a super gendered username or anything like that, you know? Which makes sense because obviously I do think that, I mean, I don't think it's any secret there's a little sexism in the gaming industry. <laughs> this looks better. Wait, what is it? What looks better? I don't see the sticker. Um, wait, I think Porter Jade has a good amount. She does! She does. See what she- yeah. But like, what is she- what- is, okay, this- maybe this is a stupid question. I feel like I followed Porter Jade for a bit, but, like, she was already big when I started following her. What- like, what did she grow off of? Like, what- like, was she ever, like, a gaming creator? Or, like, how did she- how'd she, like, become a big streamer? Because you're so right, and I love Porter Jade. She's so pretty. But, I don't know, I guess when I, like, think about- like, I know she has a lot of- I see her do a lot of chatting streams. I guess she, like, plays games with a lot of other streamers, so I don't know if she ever, like, grew doing a specific game or anything like that. But, yeah, no, I like her. She's very pretty, too. But, I, wait, I met a Torin named Beef Chest, where I don't wear chest armor as a tank. Wait, what? That's crazy. Oh, <laughs> yes, I would like that to be the results. Can't cover the queue. Oh shit, I think I think the queue is above. Wait, no, it's not. I have the sticky bomb thing above it. It should have been able to cover it. Um, I can't watch gamer guys. It's just not as fun to watch. <laughs> Why? I feel like I don't like watching gamer guys as much. Like if I'm watching a gaming stream, I feel like I like to watch girl gamers because I feel like guy gamers be raging too much. Like, and it stresses me out. Like like, whenever I see someone raging, I feel like I'm just getting, like, anxious. Like, I'm just stressed out. Like, oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like to have stressful, stressful vibes. I feel like I'm getting infected with the stress. I'm pretty sure she started out, she started out as a League streamer? I would have never, ever guessed that. I don't know. I'm so shook. Hey, thank you for the bits. Thank you, thank you. Also, thanks for not hacking me again. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Strawberry. I'm a casual gamer. Me too. But, I don't know. I guess people like to... I wish that I cared more about, like, being good at video games. Because, honestly, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't care about being good at the video game. And as a matter of fact, this might be a crazy hot take, but as a matter of fact, I think that the best games can be played by any skill level. Any, a bet, the bet, like, I feel like games that you have to be good at to enjoy are not good games. <laughs> So, like, shooter games, it's like, oh my god, if you're just getting shot over and over, you can't even fucking make any kills. It's like, fuck this shit, bro, what? <laughs> but, like, I don't know. And, like, obviously that's why different game modes exist. Like, I feel like for a lot of games, there should be, like, an easy, normal, hard, extreme, hardcore, whatever. Like, I feel like I'm very pro different gaming modes. Like, people should be able to choose their own gaming experience. But that's my hot take, okay? If you can only enjoy a game... If you're good at it. Loki Elden Ring. Elden Ring falls into this category. Like, bitch, I was fighting the second boss. I fought the second boss like 50 fucking times. I was like, fuck this shit. 
<laughs> Frostbite, thank you so much for the tier one, though. Happy 30 months. I appreciate that. Um, Refuse, also thank you for the tier one. Happy three months. Thank you, guys. Sorry, I was, like, mid-rant. I had to finish my rant, okay? <sighs> but, yeah, I want to be able to be, like... <laughs> The ca the kind of games that I like are games where it's like, yeah, you have to like focus a little bit. You have to like kind of know what's going on. But like also I can be so high that I don't know who I am and I can still play the game. <laughs> that's my, that's my take. <laughs> what's my favorite game? Oh, my favorite game of all time, Subnautica. Subnautica. That one's, oh, so cool. Such a cool storyline. Also, just such, like, a cool game. Like, I feel like there should be more, like, water world games. Because the ocean's, like, crazy. And I don't know. It's, like, I don't know. The world was very cool. And the storyline was very cool. Other than me, anyone jump off a cliff? No, I was seriously, like, getting so mad. I was like, guys, I don't even, I don't even want to play. Because, like, I would, like, do a whole stream and not progress in the game at all. Because I couldn't defeat the boss. Or whatever. Like, wh whoever I had to defeat to move on. Like, bro. I'll get it mode. Guys are competitive and there's a packing order. Girls are conditioned differently when it comes to games. Oh, sorry. Packing order. Um, I mean, I think... I guess I... Like, I consider myself to be a competitive person, but just not with games, really. Like, to me, I also... Because, like... I almost prefer games where it's like you have to work with other people to accomplish something because that's what I like about World of Warcraft is like I like how there's like a lot of com camaraderie in the community like if I go to a questing area I see someone's doing the quest I could party with them we'll do it together I like that I like that a lot more and I feel like I'm very competitive in like different aspects of my life like school or like work like I don't know I really like to like I feel like I'm I don't know I would consider myself to be a competitive person I guess just not with games because at least for me, I feel like games are more to have fun and relax. But I enjoy a good like, challenge in my life. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's like I feel like I'm very competitive in my real life. So when I'm like gaming in these fantasy worlds, I'm not trying to like be, ha be living that vibe also. Because then that'd be exhausting mentally. <laughs> Um, we are the opposite in games I can, really. Wait, oh, games at any skill level is just casual games. I don't find- wait, games at any skill level are just casual games. I don't find most fun. I grew up with super hard NES games. Anything less is just too easy for me. I mean, yeah, I guess. I guess that's also something, too, is, like, I feel like I'm playing- when I play games, I feel like I'm playing them to experience them. Not necessarily beat them or, like, become good at them like I don't know I guess that's why I guess maybe that's the difference is I do genuinely view it more as like like what I said like kind of like immersing myself in a world similar to how I would with like reading or like watching a show or something like that like except you're like actually partaking in the storyline and I like all of that stuff but I don't know I mean obviously there's so many different kinds of games out there just like there's so many different kind of books out there and so many different kinds of tv shows out there like obviously I don't think there's like one superior way to game but I guess I do I am I guess I just like multiple game modes <laughs> just let if someone wants to play a game casually let them play casually games are a break from real life supposed to be fun yes that's how I view it at least you're a casual player, not a gamer. I hate to break this to you, but like a gamer is someone that plays video games. Are you gonna tell an eight year old that's on their little eight year old basketball team that they're not a real basketball player because they're not in the NBA? <laughs> kinda mean, kinda dickhead move. It's kinda like, damn, I guess you can have that opinion, but like they play basketball, so like they're a basketball player. That's another thing too that I think annoys me is that I feel like so many like competitive gamers have such this superiority superiority complex that they're so much better than everyone else that plays video games. It's like not only do they have to feel like skill level wise they're better than other gamers, but they have to f they just think that they're just a better gamer that like that they're that other people just aren't even they don't even deserve to bless themselves with the same title that they have themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's kind of like, I guess I never get that because it's like, if you really love something, like, wouldn't you want other people to, like, love and, ha and experience that thing too? 
Like, if I really loved crocheting and someone was like, oh, I like to crochet too, but, like, for fun. I'm not, like, trying to do anything too crazy. You know what? I'm gonna be like, good for you, girl. Like, keep up crocheting. Maybe one day you'll feel up to that task, but if you never do, that's cool too. You're still a crocheter. Like, what's with the, what's with the game, the gamer? <laughs> I guess gamers are just toxic. <laughs> Maybe that's just the, the full circle moment. Holy shit! Sorry. That's just the full circle moment. Um... Gamers are toxic. We have come to the final conclusion that I think we can all agree upon. Right? Is anyone gonna try and fight me on this? Or can we all come to the same conclusion? <laughs> uh, um, I don't like depending on other people for help. Sheesh. Sound like you might need some therapy, bro. <laughs> um, she's not a hardcore VO gamer. I can be- well, I don't know, I'm not- don't get me wrong, I can still be gaming for like eight hours straight. World of Warcraft, I feel like, is perfect. It's perfect. Like, I feel like there's enough- like, I feel like there's enough going on that it's like, damn, I kinda do gotta pay attention and like, figure out what's going on. Oh, what the fuck? Oh! Okay, I'm just not even gonna look at the time, I'm just gonna only look at the queue. Um, but, <laughs> now I lost my train of thought. When you game so much, everything else is secondary. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get keep gaming yeah I don't know what do you guys think like cuz here's what I here's what I even think is I even think that people that play mobile games on their phone and that's the only kind of games that they play they're gamers <laughs> they're gamers <laughs> but then then the question comes into asking what about board game players are they gamers like, would you consider professional chess players gamers? Well, chess is, chess, wasn't like chess, like part of esports, something esports or something recently? Like, wasn't it actually like, I don't know. Where does the boundary lie? Um, once I started playing online, I found out really quick I wasn't as good as I thought I was. It forced me to up my gaming skills considerably. I guess that's good. I mean, yeah, what, however you have fun. Like, if you want to be pushing yourself and, like, trying to learn really hard shit with games, like, totally go for it. Like, not talking down on it. I just don't like when people that do that stuff talk down on people like me who, like, maybe play more casually or play for fun. Um, it's all just semantics. Call what you want, in my opinion. Okay, yes, yes. We're just, we're just, uh, we're just doing brain exercises. Here, that's one thing, chat. One thing you gotta know about me, okay, is... When I'm, like, asking these things of, like, what you think, I'm not asking what is right or wrong. I'm just asking what you think. And, like, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, it's probably just semantics. It's just whatever. It's not a big deal. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like... What's wrong with doing some little brain exercises? Think about shit. Um, I would say if you're streaming and you start playing that one game off stream, I would say you now genuinely enjoy it. Oh, oh, I, I'll, most of the time when I'm getting super into games, I feel like I'll, I'll always want to play them off stream. I just haven't been for World of Warcraft because I'm too scared to die in hardcore, which is why I'm like, damn, I do want to, I feel like I do want to do like a retail stream or something, some kind of stream where I make a non-hardcore character that I could like play off stream. I could play on stream if I want to just like have a more chill vibe or something, but you know. Um, get the gloves, then let's dance. Wait, what's that? So now we're all toxic. <laughs> hey, I can have my toxic moments. Only when I'm, like, playing, uh, like, Fortnite or something, though. Then I, like, turn into, like, a toxic 13-year-old boy. See, I think that some games maybe just, like, are toxic. Like, they just bring out the toxicity. <laughs> uh, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. when it was raining. Thank you. I actually have another outside ASMR video coming up. It's a secret. <laughs> Um, okay, what the heck? We're still at like an hour wait time. I'm so confused. I feel like the queue has gone down a lot. It's already gone down a thousand. But I feel like the estimated time is not going down proportionally. So I'm confused how they're getting this estimated time. Um, there are no hardcore servers for it, but all the servers are crazy full. I know, I know. Or I'm waiting. I'm just waiting so patiently. I didn't know that there was going to be server. Like, I didn't know there was, like, servers and, like, server limits and shit. I would have gotten into queue while I was, like, getting ready or something. But 
Thank you, whoever brought that up. Was it Richitoku? Who was it? Someone brought it up at the beginning, so now we're just waiting. It only goes down when people leave. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, let's just, someone needs to just go around and everyone that you see that's in the server, go and cut their internet for me real quick. Thanks. We only need to do that to like 2,076 people. Um, post the queue will be done. Should I even do one? I guess I can. Should I show off my socks? Eh. All right, showing off my socks. <laughs> okay. What do you guys think? You think the socks are just gonna bring in all these viewers, right? I'm gonna be blowing up. It's gonna be crazy. Mm -hmm. Should we watch like a trailer for Season of Discovery before we play? I feel like I wanna know more about like what the hell it is. Like what, what is it? Like what, is it like an expansion pack? Is it like a whole different world? Like what is going on um okay do, 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 do. Do, do, do. wow i really decentered my camera but sorry trying to hide my messy desk trying to hide my messy desk oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah Sorry, y'all. We're doing a little waiting. I don't know. Why do I- why do I look the way that I do? I don't know, man. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I, if I like this. Nothing's fine, I'm torn. I'm all out of sleep. And this is how I feel. I'm torn and I am chained, lying naked on the floor. Illusion never change into something real. Na -na 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 -na. The perfect sky is torn. I'm all out of faith, and this is how I feel. I'm torn and shamed. Guys, I don't know what to do. I don't know which pick to post. Can I even show y'all? Okay, yes, but I cannot. Hello? These are, this is what I got. I'm like, okay, is the one me pointing? I guess that one's weird, right? Let's take that one out. Um, peace signs or whatever the hell this is. <laughs> one or two, chat. Which one? One or two? Vote! I have to lean over this way. Oh wait, 
I saw that Rich Toku sent a link. Um, they have a short intro about what's n next. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. Oh shit, oh shit. Whew, thank God! I thought the pictures would disappear because you know they'd be fucking doing that to me. Um, what's on this messy desk makeup? Nah, it's not makeup. It's just, I like, didn't really unpack my, I, I finished unpacking my backpack from when I was like out of town and I'm not gonna lie. My go-to when I'm unpacking my, my travel backpack is I take everything out of that backpack and then put it away. Cause everything that's in the backpack is like all from random shit. It's like, I keep my chargers, my switch, my planner. I don't know, just like a bunch of random shit, so. It's not like my suitcase, where it's like, I open up my suitcase, most of the shit that's in there is clothes, I can put that away. The backpack is the random mishmash. Chat, when you travel, what do you have in your backpack? Glasses, glasses cleaners, chapstick, sunglasses, ID, keys, water bottle. See how all of these things are in, stored in different rooms? <laughs> okay, it looks like people are voting for one. Yeah, it's winning by a decent amount. I'm going with that one. All right. We're going with that. There we go. I have to call attention to the socks. Have to call attention to the socks. Uh, I think this is the one. Post. Tis posted. Tis posted. Tis posted. Depo, 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 de, de, depo, de, depo, de, do, po, de, do. Okay, anyways. Uh, are we the little Terraria people at the bottom? Oh, this is for my subbies. If you are a subscriber and you talk in chat, you will have a little stream avatar on screen for like 90 seconds. But if you keep talking, then, you know, your person will stay up there. There we go. So you have your sub, by the way, you get a stream avatar. You can customize your little guy by putting the mouse, your mouse over the screen right here. Um, check it out. Uh, GL's radio told me to come say hi. Radio? Huh? Let me take a gander at this SOD. How come everyone's playing as like a zombie? Is that a thing? Wait, why is everyone a zombie? Can someone explain? Can someone explain to me? Um, well, okay, this girl's like, this girl's a human, but why is everyone else a zombie? Do I have to be a zombie, y'all? Undead? Undead is a horde race. Is that the move? <laughs> Should I try out horde? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But, I mean, if that's what the homies are doing, though, bro... <laughs> Um, we'll see. With the best and busiest starting area. Jesus. What do you mean best? Why is it so busy? Yeah, wait, if I were to do horde, what are the horde races? Once you go horde, you're never bored. Ugh. Well, we have, we have been playing alliance though. So I guess maybe it would be cool to like see. I just type in horde, it says orders. No bitch. Horde races. Playable races. Wait, I'm, is this for classic? Orc, undead, tauren, troll, blood elf, goblin, pandaren, drakthir. I don't think there were that many options in classic. Wasn't it just orc, undead, tauren, troll? I mean, Jesus. I mean, okay, I'm not gonna lie. Like, 
This this is the clear clearly the baddie choice. Because my god. Yeah, I don't know. Um y'all already know I like have to be a baddie. If I'm if I'm being able to customize my character, I have to be a baddie. This is, so these other races are in uh retail wow. I don't think they're in classic though, so I think it's just these four are in classic. Undersea is the best. Orgrimmar is Orgrimmar is unorganized. Let me see what class. Should I play a warlock again though, guys, or should I make a different class? Wait, okay, I feel like I need to be looking at classic. Can I like see classic? Please. Wow. Classic. Oh god. Okay, thank you. Race and racial abilities. Okay, cool. This is a nice little graph. Wow, they can all be warriors? I guess that makes sense. They can all be rogues except for the Tauren. What, are they saying Tauren, Tauren's ain't got no stealth or what? Okay, looks like as an undead, I could be a mage, a priest, a rogue, and a wolf. Well, do I do another warlock or is that lame? Do you guys want to watch me try out a different class? <laughs> undead is top of classic horde cows are not sneaky they do got hooves they do have hooves um let's see what it says warlock both orc and forsaken forsaken what's forsaken is that a race have strong pvp racials what's forsaken bitch the orc racial command also has use in solo okay i'm sorry bitch but i'm not trying to be an orc bro I feel like out of all these classes, though, I do just want to play the Warlock. <laughs> do I get different minions on the Horde side? Like, is there anything different or it's just, like, the same? Oh, Forsaken is undead! Oh. Okay. So that means that the undead is good as a Warlock. I don't know, chat. Would you guys be bored watching me play another Warlock? I kind of liked the Warlock, though. But... God, then I'd have to learn a whole new class, and I don't know how much y'all would want to deal with that, TBH. Um, for the Forsake are undead that escaped the control of the Leech King. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, what do you guys think? Let me think. Okay, let me, let me pick class and then race, perhaps. Um, if I were to try out a different class... I guess a druid could be cool, or a hunter. Um, we tried paladin. I guess that's alliance only anyways. Um, I feel like a priest would be boring. What do you guys think? I feel like it's such a support role, you know? Mage is pretty cool too. Yeah, but I feel like if I'm gonna be a spellcaster, I'd rather have a minion as a warlock. Well, what what do you guys think? What or like what's what's like the main like what's the difference between a mage and a warlock? I feel like I don't even really know. Can I read more about the classes, please? Hmm. Uh, my favorite class ever was Shaman. Shaman? Yeah, there's like so many spellcasters, I honestly do not really know what the difference between all of them are. Um, shamans are considered another versatile race. Okay. Our shamans are spiritual guides and practitioners of the very elements. Unlike some other mystics, shamans commune with forces that are not strictly benevolent. The elements are chaotic and rage against one another in unending primal fury. Acting as moderators, shamans summon totems that focus the earth, fire, water, and air elements to support the shaman's allies or punish those who threaten them. Damn. So, I don't know if I really know. <laughs> Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. um, warlocks just use DOT damage while mages are more direct and have more survivability while warlocks depend on pets. Oh, that might not be bad then. I might be down to do a mage. 
Hmm. Shaman's not going to be fun for you. Shaman can do both damage and heal spells. Healing would be nice. Hi, NYC. Hello. How are you? Um, interesting. Interesting. I guess we'll see once we're in. We're halfway there, kind of-ish. And I guess we've spent about half the waiting time, so I guess... I guess the waiting time's been kind of accurate. Rah, 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 rah. Should I even play SOD tonight? Yo. What do you guys think? Is it worth the wait? Um, should I play SOD tonight? Yes. Or play Old Warlock. No, if I if I start playing the game, it, I'm not gonna be in the queue anymore. I'll have to leave the queue to play. Um, rogue. I feel like a rogue would be boring. I would never play as a rogue. <laughs> I think rogue is the only class that I would just like never ever play as, honestly. <laughs> um, it's worth the wait to go ahead and get it done. It is. Wait, what? Well, I would just, I'm not, I, w I would just wouldn't play a Season of Discovery if we didn't get into this server. Hi, Alpha. Hello. I would just play my Warlock before and then make my character in the server when, when uh, not the day that the, the thing comes out. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Um, let's see what the people are saying. Vote! Everyone's vibing with me tonight. Is that what's going on? Everyone hates me. Cool. <sighs> um, well, we could watch a YouTube video in the meantime. In the meantime, maybe we can get into some World of Warcraft lore. That could be good. Maybe we can get the lore. Oh, wait. How long was the video Rich Toku sent? 13 minutes. Hey, that'll kill some time. Join a normal server. Better for a newish player unless people right now. Streamer server was mostly chosen because of asthma. Oh. What do you guys think? I'm so torn. Can't get rid of cues. Well, I imagine there's a lot of people wanting to play. Okay, let's, how about this guys? How about this, how about this? Let's watch this Season of Discovery video and maybe from there we can uh, feel the vibes. Oh my god, of course the tie too. Okay, yeah, that's that's the decision then. We're going to watch this video and and then we're going to I'm gonna, we're going to decide afterwards <laughs> if it's if it's worth it cuz it says the video is 13 minutes, which means we would still have like 30 minutes left potentially of the queue time, but it's been kind of jumping around, so I don't really know. Um SOD season of discovery. It's a new world of Warcraft. What is it? I, I feel like I need what it, what is it? Is it like a expansion? Addition? I feel like I need something to call it. <laughs> help me. Help me, please. It is classic plus. Okay. That doesn't tell me anything. I'm still lost. Well, let's watch this video on it. Hopefully, it'll tell us more. Okay, guys, are we ready? Hello, welcome to WoWcast. Today, oh. we're going to talk about WoW Classic Season of Discovery, and I have two special guests with me today. I'm Nora Valletta. I'm a lead software engineer on WoW Classic. I'm Josh Greenfield, and I'm a senior game producer on Wild Magic. So, what is Season of Discovery? Season of Discovery is a uh, interesting new twist on WoW Classic that sort of revisits and recaptures the exploration aspect of World of Warcraft and really encourages players to get in tune with Azeroth and really pay attention to their surroundings and pick up on things that might be different, things that might be new to them, and experience that with other players. The yeah, Defias Pillagers! Too. Season of Discovery, due to the kind of seasonal nature of it, it's a really great opportunity for us to take kind of 
a lot of risks and wild chances on things. And so also to kind of ask what if questions, like what if you could heal as a mage? Or what if you could tank as a rogue or a warlock? And these are all super interesting twists on the class fantasy uh, that we've sort of know and love about original World of Warcraft and gives you a new way to approach, a new lens through which to view the original World of Warcraft world. How does a new character experience Season of Discovery? Is it different than WoW Classic? It'll be much the same as original World of Warcraft when you first create your character. You know, you'll kind of load into the game world at, say, Northshire Abbey if you're a human. You'll go kill wolves, kill a few kobolds. But when you hit level two, pretty much right away, you're going to get your first quest to discover your first rune ability. And that's the first taste of the discoveries in Season of Discovery. So you complete that quest, you get your first rune ability, and these are usually really impactful rune abilities. But after that, the game doesn't really tell you what to do. It just kind of says, go find more. And that's really what Season of Discovery is all about, is going out and rediscovering the original World of Warcraft world. Can you explain more about what runes are? Runes are essentially abilities that players can find through various means uh, out in the open world. There are 12 per class in the 1 to 25 leveling bracket, and there will be additional runes in later leveling brackets. Players will essentially, like Josh said, venture out into the world. They will uh, work towards discovering these runes. Uh, and some of them are a little bit more involved than others. That being said, they are tied to some really huh? cool abilities that players can mix and match. There are different rune engraving slots and, you know, find interesting new ways to play their class. So how do rune discoveries play into the class fantasies? Um, so if you can imagine yourself as perhaps a mage, right? Mages are able to manipulate fire, ice, uh, and even time in some cases. Uh, and so you can imagine those discoveries for mages sort of playing into those things. You may end up having to manipulate those things over the course of having to uh, discover and solve some of the riddles that will earn you some runes. Yeah, to add on to that, one of the things that we're really interested in with Season of Discovery is giving a little exploration to, you know, how does, for example, a dwarf priest differ from a undead priest? And how would they channel the energies of the light and the shadow differently? And there's it's safe to say that there's, that's going to play into some of the discoveries and some of the things you're going to need to do to find some of the priest abilities. What are you most excited about? I'm personally very excited for players to really uh, immerse themselves in Azeroth uh, in, in a way that I, I feel like was easy and, and it was kind of the, the only way to experience WoW Classic when it initially launched because you didn't know what to expect. You were kind of uh, adventuring out into the world. You couldn't just go and look up a guide on where to find everything or what to do. And so I, I look forward to having players experience that again. I think for me, the thing I'm most excited about is new raid and dungeon content. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a big fan of in-game raiding and we've got some really amazing stuff coming in Season of Discovery. You know, we talked about this at BlizzCon that the first raid is Black Fathom Deeps, which is a, you know, it's an iconic leveling dungeon that we've converted into a new raid instance. Um, we've completely from the ground up rebuilt all seven bosses in the raid. That's so cool. Um, yeah, it's, so cool. It's, it's so much fun. Uh, and we got a lot of great feedback from BlizzCon on this, and we're super excited for people to actually see the whole raid in the wild. Are there any adjustments from BlizzCon that you can talk about? Yeah, we've been listening to a lot of feedback ever since BlizzCon. Uh, we've been reading social media. We've been playtesting still internally amongst ourselves. Uh, we've One of the fun things about Season of Discovery is we've gotten kind of a crack team together internally on, <laughs> on the Classic team and the greater Team 2 World of Warcraft team together. And we've done a ton of raid playtests, ton of class playtests. And we've really been kind of, we've narrowed down this process to kind of process that feedback and act on it quickly. So we've already made a number of adjustments uh, since BlizzCon. And, uh, I think players will be uh, pleasantly surprised by a lot of those. The best thing about BlizzCon for this is that we got a lot of great feedback on the raid. And you know, we kind of tuned the raid for fun at BlizzCon, right? Like it was, wasn't particularly punishing. We wanted people to really go in there and have fun, but we've maybe cranked it up a little oh. bit for the, for the live release. And we think it's gonna be a really fun challenge. And we also think it's gonna be really rewarding. We've uh, tuned the rewards to be very powerful for this level band, and we think people are gonna have a lot of fun with those. Players have been asking, what's the right way to level up in Season Discovery? 
I don't think there's a right way to level up in Season of Discovery. Um, you know, the leveling journey in Season of Discovery is going to be pretty similar to how it was in original World of Warcraft. You know, you can do quests, you can uh, fight monsters, you can also do dungeons. But the thing that we really do like about the season is that there's so much in the outside world that, you know, you might find it as a little bit uh, better use of your time to level in the outside world to be able to find those runes and be, be able to keep your eyes peeled for wherever they might be lurking, you know, over the next hill or in the next cave or crypt. And some of those runes will also uh, encourage players to team up and, uh, you know, solve puzzles together. Yeah. Uh, and so th there's th there is going to be a lot of collaboration involved, I think, between players. What are some unique approaches that you guys are taking with Season to Discovery? Yeah, I think that's one of the most exciting things about Season of Discovery is it's a, it gives us a chance to really try something daring and new. And one of the things we're really trying to do is keep as many of the discoveries that you're going to find on your class kind of hidden in a secret. And to that end, we're not having a public beta or a PTR. We're basically going to, everyone's going to experience it all at once together. Uh, it will be fresh for everyone. Uh, in those first few weeks, we're going to see a ton of information sharing and, and secret finding communities pop up, and that's super exciting to us. Another way uh, in which we're kind of experimenting here is that, as you know, there is a zone-wide PvP event in Ashenvale, and we have uh, plans for other, you know, zone-wide PvP events in the future as well. And we want to make sure is that everyone's on an even playing field. One of the things we're doing is we, we will be actually trying to enforce some amount of faction balance on Season of Discovery servers. Oh, wow. Um, and we're leaving it all very configurable, so we're, we're going to kind of keep an eye on the situation and, and figure out what, what kind of balance feels appropriate. I want to move on to another player question that I've been seeing and that's uh, how will class tuning work? So we very purposely, uh, you know, we'll be keeping an eye on, on all the abilities, on the PvP situation, on, you know, the, the raid, and making sure that nothing is too absolutely bonkers. <laughs> um, but we have been prioritizing fun over perfect balance. Um, there is some aspect to things kind of feeling a little bit wild in a game that I think is very fun and important to have, uh, especially in Season of Discovery, where we're kind of going into this with this experiment experimentation mindset. Yeah, particularly with the kind of level banded approach too, um, trying to kind of chase perfect balance as we create as we move through the level bands, it's 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 probably not a great place for us to spend our time. We're definitely like you Nora know, said, we're going to look for outliers and things like that. But really, we're focused on making each class feel very fun and lean into each class's class fantasy and each level band, um, and then we'll you know obviously make adjustments as we go. We've seen a lot of uh, players talking about. Um, basically trying to science through all the abilities and trying to like math out how they're gonna like succeed in the one to 25 leveling bracket. And that's like really awesome, but it's also like, hey, that's that's the first bracket. Yeah. You know, things may <laughs> shift a little in, in the future brackets as you gain more abilities and, you know, and, and as the season progresses. So what is the next level band after one to 25? Uh, the level 25 to 40 level band. We're very excited about that. You're going to be able to get your 31 point talent um, and you're also going to be able to go into a new raid. And uh, we're happy to confirm that it is going to be Nomergon that you're going to go into at level 40. Can't wait for everybody in the party to get lost. <laughs> no, oh, I know, right? It is an Alliance territory. How will Horde get there? Yeah, um, one of the things we're doing with all the raids in Season of Discovery is we're actually, uh, you know, we're keeping the quests intact. We're kind of re redoing them. In a lot of cases, we're upping the rewards for them. But one of the quests that the Horde has is to actually get a teleporter from Stranglethorn Vale to Nomergon. And so we're going to maintain that quest. And like you said, it is Alliance territory. So we're going to do a little something special for the Horde here so that maybe they're on an even playing field uh, going that deep into Alliance mm -hmm. zones. Speaking of PvP, as you're leveling through that, you know, 25 to 40 uh, leveling range, I think a very iconic zone uh, for players, especially those who uh, play on PvP realms, is Stranglethorn Vale. And so, I don't know, that might be a, a really good candidate for another zone-wide PvP event. So with the new level ban from 25 to 40, what do players need to do? Um, so, I mean, the, the cap is just going to raise, so they'll be able to level to 40, and they'll level, you know, the same way they, they typically would maybe in WoW Classic, uh, with the exception of there being a lot more for them to kind of stumble upon in the world and uh, unlock some additional abilities in that band. With your characters, uh, what happens to them after Season Discovery? That's something that we've been uh, 
keeping in mind. We do want players to uh, be able to preserve their characters that they have, uh, you know, sort of embarked on this new season of Discovery <laughs> journey with. Uh, and so we don't have concrete plans to share as of right now, but we do want uh, to make sure players' characters are persisted in some way when the season ends. Yeah, we, we want players to go somewhere with these characters uh, that is a, a natural place for them to end up. You know, we're in a situation now where we're creating new items, we're doing all sorts of new different things. There might be new item sets, yeah. things like that. And would those work in era? Potentially not, but yeah. it's very possible for uh, seasonal characters to end up in some place that's not quite era, but someplace really cool. So when you guys are playing on the build and testing it out, do you guys have any fun stories you can share? Yeah. Yeah, tons. <laughs> uh, one of the funniest things about Season of Discovery is w when we're playing, play testing as a group internally together, we end up f in situations where someone's like, oh yeah, this thing is from uh, the original game, right? And we're like, no, that's actually new. And sort of the inverse of that is whenever the hardcore PTR actually came out, that first day that it was up, you know, I had logged in and I had created a dwarf character and there's actually a quest in Cold Ridge Valley that asks you to get a rune in original World of Warcraft. It's completely unrelated to the rune system, but I panicked because I forgot and I'm like getting on the phone with QA and trying to, oh my like, gosh. I'm like, oh no, it's in the build, it's in the build. It's not, it wasn't, it was totally just, and so it goes both ways. There's a lot of that kind of funny, uh, is this is this is this new? Is this old uh, effect that happens? And it's it's just every time it happens, it's, it's usually funny. There was also a really uh, er really early on. There was a rogue rune that uh, essentially allowed them to kind of like kick somebody and knock them back a little ways. And there ended up being a bug. Maybe someone added an additional zero or something. But like there ended up being a bug where like the knockback was insane such that you would just knock them into orbit basically <laughs> and like oh we saw gosh. you know like someone demo it and we're just like ah yeah maybe not <laughs> and you know in in the interest of making sure classic still feels like classic the knockback in general was something that we kind of decided to 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 move away from so you won't be able to knock people back as a rogue but it's it was just a funny you know what if you could knock somebody off into the totally different zone so before we wrap up, is there any other updates that you guys can share? Yeah, you know, since BlizzCon, we've been watching a ton of feedback. And oh, hey, Josh. Hey, Nora. Uh, hi, Bethany. Uh, um, you know, I, we're really strapped on time. And you know, people really haven't been asking for anything like this. But I just made a new two-handed enhancement shaman rune. And I want to hear what you think about it. That's great, man. But we're kind of in the middle of something right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. I'll uh, see you later. Um, well, I guess that wraps up WoWcast, so <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. Wait, what? Why? Why did- why- what was that? I don't- I wasn't a part of that inside joke. I don't- I don't think I got that- that inside joke. What's 2H runes? Someone said, thank you for listening to the Xiaomi community about us wanting 2H runes. It's fantastic to hear things like the Shaman rune drop. Wait, what? Okay, absolutely love the 2H Shaman joke. <laughs> Wait, what? What's that mean? Um... Also, I kind of have to pee. What do you guys think? Uh, actually, it did look pretty cool. It did look pretty cool. I think, I, I will say though, I definitely think this is like something for like more seasoned players because they were like so focused on like, oh, these are all the new things. You're just re-experiencing it, but it's more exciting. It's like, honestly, I haven't even really experienced it yet. So, but I will be trying my best. I'm still kind of torn on what class to play, but I honestly am leaning towards Warlock and Excuse me, but um, I think it would be cool to be like a tank, like what they were saying, warlock tank. I thought warlocks kind of were could be tanks already, but like I don't know. I do kind of like I kind of like the tanky vibe. I kind of just want to be like running up and like fighting motherfuckers. Maybe I would like a DPS vibe too, though. The mage also sounded cool. I will say, 
my socks thank you i know so i'm like sitting like this because i'm like i have to show off the socks they're so cute i thought they would be like tall enough to go over my knees but they're not so rawr. they have a tank pet but as a cloth word, they die quick when attacked i see i see i see Interessante. i'll have to be doing some thinking well we'll see whenever we make it um Do want to play though now i really want to play it she's not discovery <laughs> but the queue i need the queue to freaking go down please please lord please okay let me take a gander let me take a gander a druid would also be cool okay and it was saying like you get more into the class lore that's honestly making me want to be the undead a little bit less because I don't know. I feel like the I feel like Torrid would have cool class lore. Um, the Torrid, a race with deep shamanistic roots, are longtime residents of Kalimdor. They have a deep and abiding love of nature, and vast majority of them worship a deity known as the Earth Mother. Um. Honestly, I'd be down to be a Torin Druid. Should I do that? I'm thinking either Warlock or Mage Undead or Torin Druid. I'm playing a Mage Healer. Oh yeah, because that's what they said, the Mages can heal. Hmm... Let me, let me let's read a little bit about the undead. Um, when the undead scourge initial scare scourge initially swept across Azeroth, they converted a number of members of the alliance to the undead. When the combined forces of orcs, elves, trolls, dwarves, and humans began to fight back, though the leech's king hold, king's hold on his forces began to weaken. A small faction of humans, known as the Forsaken, broke free of the Leech King's control. Now, free of the bonds of servitude as well as the troublesome emotions and connections of their human lives, the Forsaken have found a new home with the Horde. Hmm. Um. Okay, wait, I do have to go pee really quick. I'm gonna go pee. Maybe we can watch, like, one more video, one more YouTube video. If anyone, maybe Rich Toku, I trust you the most, but less than 30 minutes, less than 28 minutes. Does anyone have a kind of, kind of quick recap of the World of Warcraft lore? Again, doesn't, it doesn't need to be super in-depth. I know there's a fucking lot, but I feel like there's got to be some kind of recap video out there. I don't know if you guys know one. Feel free to send a link in chat if you do know one, but if not, maybe we can look up one together. Okay, I'm gonna go pee really quick though. Maybe I'll grab a snack. Maybe we can have like snacking gaming vibes, yeah?
Guys, you know what I just thought of? We could test out um, my foot massager. <laughs> Should I test it out? Wait, let's see. How long is this video? 23 minutes. Complete the almost complete history of World of Warcraft. Okay, perfect. Maybe I'll let me let me bust open this this foot thing <laughs> while I'm um while we watch this. Just kill all life in the universe. Oh my god, wait, okay, I'm sorry, but I need to restart this. Sorry, the video volume was low, and also, that was really fast. I feel like I need captions for my brain to even process this. Maybe I don't even- honestly- Honestly, I'm not even gonna mess with the foot massager, because I feel like I do low-key want to pay attention to this, and he is going very fast, so. Redo! So, you're new to WoW and want to know what's going on, or you're just trying to figure out which horde you're a part of. Here's the entire history of Azeroth in 23 minutes. Way back at the start of the universe, there were titans, which are gods born out of planets, kind of. The titans formed a pantheon, which went around looking for more baby titan planets, called World Souls. One of these planets was named Azeroth, currently inhabited by a bunch of elementals. A mysterious group of beings who wanted to kill the pantheon, named the Void Lords, were also looking for World Souls, and sent their servants the old gods to go find and corrupt them. Some old gods found Azeroth and started bleeding bugs on everything. The Pantheon eventually finds Azeroth too, and they start fighting everyone. First the Elementals, then the Old Gods. The Titans win, but they can't kill the Old Gods without killing Azeroth, so they build prisons instead. They leave behind a bunch of metal guys, and also some dragons to look after Azeroth and guard the prison in their absence. Off in another section of the universe, the Titan Sargeras learns the Old Gods could corrupt Titan planets and decides the only reasonable solution is to kill all life in the universe, so he starts building a massive army called the Burning Legion by corrupting inhabitants of Titan planets. The Pantheon isn't happy that all their planets are being corrupted, so they try to calm Sargeras down, telling him that the army is pointless because they found a world soul strong enough to defeat the Void Lords. Sargeras responds by killing the Pantheon and imprisoning their spirits, and sets out to find and destroy Azeroth, fearing what would happen if a titan that powerful was corrupted. Unfortunately, Sargeras forgot to ask where Azeroth was first, so he has to start looking for it. Another powerful world soul is Argus, a planet inhabited by the Eridar, who are led by Archimon, Kil'jaeden, and Velen. Sargeras wants to corrupt Argus and approaches the free rulers in disguise, offering them immense power with no strings attached. Archimon and Kil'jaeden accept the power like suckers, and most of the Eridar get corrupted, but Velen realizes it's a trick and refuses. Velen prays for guidance, and a race of sentient chandeliers called the Naru hear him and send a spaceship, which Velen and the remaining uncorrupted Eridar use to flee Argus. The uncorrupted group changes their name to the Draenei, which means the exiled ones. Kil'jaeden is angry about their escape and vows to hunt them down. Sargeras corrupts the world soul of Argus and uses it to build a machine that lets him regenerate anyone in his army, making them effectively immortal. Meanwhile, back on Azeroth, the imprisoned old gods drive their guards crazy and make a curse that turns stuff into meat, meaning these guys turn into these guys. A big magic pool called the Well of Eternity that was left behind by the Titans starts hyper-evolving deer and squirrels into a race called trolls. The trolls dub themselves the Zandalari and form the Z Wait, 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 wait. Deers and scrolls... Wait. Deers and squirrels become trolls... Okay. Do- are they all trolls, or are there, like, different kinds of trolls? Zandalari Empire, which has a strict caste system. The lowest caste decides that being in the lowest caste sucks and leaves to form their own empires. One of these empires settles by the Well of Eternity and evolve even further, transforming into elves. These okay. newly formed elves create the Kaldoria Empire. Led by Queen Ajara, they use the Well of Eternity to gain magical and technological superiority, allowing them to swiftly defeat the Zandalari and take over Kalimdor. The Kaldora's excessive use of a Well of Eternity lets Sargeras magically access Azeroth, but he still has no idea where it is in physical space, so he needs to rely on opening portals to invade. Since he needs a powerful mage to open the portal, Sargeras reaches out to Ajara and offers her a place at his side. Ajara agrees and uses Well of Eternity to summon a Burning Legion into Azeroth. The dragons in an elf rebellion led by Toronto Whisperwind and brothers Illidan and Malfurion Stormrage fight to stop Ajara in the War of the Ancients. Attempting to gain power against the Legion, Illidan pretends to join Ajara's forces. Sargeras is so grateful he stabs out Illidan's eyes and gives him cool demon vision. This allows Illidan to see the true power of a burning Legion, and he begins to fear their defeat on Azeroth will ultimately be pointless. 
One of the five aspects, named Nelfarian, is driven mad by the old gods, who convince him to steal the other aspect's powers by making a weapon called the Dragon Soul under the guise of fighting the Legion. Once a weapon is built, Nelfarian blows everyone up with it. He changes his name to Deathling to show off how edgy and cool he is. Malfurion steals the Dragon Soul and hides it. Deathling is sealed in Deep Home, a big cave at the core of Azeroth. The Rebellion shuts down the portal and stops the Legion, but the Well of Eternity is destroyed in the process, which causes a big magical explosion called the Sundering that breaks Kalimdor into a bunch of little pieces. As the Kaldori capital sinks into the ocean, the old god Nazoth turns Azara and her followers into fish. Obsessed with the power of a Nightwell and fearing another Legion invasion, Ilden uses water reeds stolen from a Well of Eternity to make a new well on Mount Hyjal. The other elves are angered by this and throw Ilden in jail for his actions. The remaining elves fight over whether to use the last of a well and break into two factions. The Night Elves stay on Kalimdor and the Highborn travel to the Eastern Kingdoms and make a new font of magical energy called the Sunwell. They rename themselves to the High Elves. The children of some Vrykul and Northrend are being born mutated. These mutated children are ordered to be killed, but some are snuck to the Eastern Kingdoms instead. Here they form tribes and call themselves humans. <laughs> one group of humans, called the Arathi tribe, begins to unite the other groups under one banner, forming the Kingdom of Arathor. Eventually, the Kingdom of Arathor grows so large that several of its biggest cities declare independence and break off into the kingdoms of Gilneas, Altrak, Dalaran, Kul Tiras, Stormwind, and Lordaeron. The High Elves ally themselves with humans to fight the trolls living in the Eastern Kingdoms, while the Night Elves and Dragons fight the Old God bugs and lock them in the Titan prison of Ankaraj. The High Elves teach the humans magic, and some of the humans start to accidentally summon demons and elementals. To protect against the threats created by humans having magic, the leaders of Dalaran decide to give one human a whole bunch more magic. This person is called the Guardian, and they pass their power on to the next person the Council chooses when they retire. Sargeras, who still has no idea where Azeroth is physically, is currently trying to open another portal to invade Fruit, but opening an army-sized portal requires a lot of magic, so Sargeras can only open a small portal and send a less powerful mini-version of himself called an Avatar Fruit. His Avatar then proceeds to start eating dragons in order to gain more magic. But dragons aren't a fan of being eaten, so they ask the humans for help, and the humans send the current guardian, Agewin, who goes to Northrend and kills the Avatar, sealing its body in the tomb of Sargeras so it can't be resurrected. Unbeknownst to Agewin, a portion of Sargeras' soul powering the Avatar jumps into her when she kills it, and proceeds to hide there. Adrian decides that someone else getting to choose who gets her powers is lame, so she goes into hiding. Remember Velen and those goats on the spaceship that were fleeing the Legion? They just crashed onto a peaceful planet called Draenor and made friends with the Orcs, a race of shaman who are happy to share their planet. Everyone is friendly, and these two races are sure to be lifelong pals. Back on Azeroth, the dwarves are living inside a mountain when their king dies, and suddenly everyone wants to be the new leader. The War of the Free Hammers breaks out, and the dwarves split into the Bronzebeard, Darkiron, and Wildhammer clans. The Bronzebeards win and take over Ironforge. Oh, Angry over okay. losing the war, the Darkirons try to summon elementals to kill the other clans, but they do too good a job and accidentally summon Ragnaros, the Fire Lord, who traps the Darkiron dwarves inside a Black Rock mountain and forces them to act as his slaves. Agewin is still in hiding and just had a child named Medivh. Unbeknownst to her, the latent fragments of Sargeras' soul jump into Medivh and hide inside him. In a stunning display of nepotism, Agewin gives her infant child the powers of a guardian. <laughs> the human kingdom of Stormwind goes to war with the Gurubashi trolls. During a troll attack on Stormwind City, the now adult Medivh uses his powers as a guardian to obliterate the trolls and save the city. He's heralded as a hero and welcomed as the new guardian. Sargeras remains undiscovered inside of him. On Draenor, Kildraden is tracked down Velen and Vidranai. He reaches out to an orc shaman named Gul'dan, offering him power if he helps turn the orcs against him. Gul'dan agrees and proceeds to frame Vidranai for attacks on orc villages. The orcs respond by banding together to stop Vidranai. Gul'dan forms a cool new group called the Horde, and a secret ingredient is fell magic. He convinces the Horde to drink the blood of a demon Manoroth, which has the side effect of turning their skin green and also enslaving them to the Legion. He installs a bloodthirsty black hand as a puppet warchief. This new, fell-crazed Horde slaughters Vidranai, who flee into the forest led by Velen. Under Warchief Blackhand, the Horde is reckless and destructive. Quickly, they eat all the food on Draenor and need a new place to live. Sargeras sees this as an opportunity to have his avatar freed from the tomb and tells Gul'dan about a lush planet the Horde can invade called Azeroth. Back on Azeroth, Sargeras begins to corrupt Medivh from within, eventually convincing him to help Gul'dan open a dark portal, a massive gate that connects Azeroth to Draenor. The orcs pour through, marking the beginning of the First War. The First War rages on for three years between the Horde and the Kingdom of Stormwind, led by King Lane Wren. The Kingdom of Stormwind still believes Medivh is their ally, and he continues to act as the Guardian. An orc named Garona meets and befriends Medivh and his apprentice Khadgar. Garona abandons the Horde and sides with humans. Together, Khadgar and Garona discover that Medivh is responsible for opening the portal and team up with General Anduin Lothar to kill Medivh. Orgrim Doomhammer is upset by Blackhand's brutality towards his own soldiers and challenges him to a mock hurrah for leadership of the Horde. Orgrim wins- Hold on. Whew! I need a break for a sec. It's a lot of information to process. And barely remember any of the- How do you even, like, I don't- How do you- Like- uh, 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 like, how does he know this? I'm so confused. <laughs> like, do you just find this out, like, through doing the quests and stuff? This is barely to the first expansion. I know, I paused. I thought we'd be, like, 15 minutes in. We are seven minutes in. So much has happened. <sighs> okay. Okay. I know. I know. I just need books. Wait, what? There's World of Warcraft books? You aren't even at Warcraft 1 yet. Okay. Okay. He's just, he's really going. He's really going with this, but I like that, I suppose. Better than being too slow. Alright. 
Let's continue. Ends and kills black. Oh, just kidding. Freak, thank you so much. See freaking, I appreciate you. Happy three months. Thank you. Heart, heart. Okay. Whew. All right, we're locking back in. We're, I'll take breaks every now and then so we can give our brains time to digest. Grona returns to Stormwind to deliver her report of Medivh's death. While informing King Ren of the situation, Grona is possessed by Horde warlocks and assassinates the king against her will. Without oh. its leader, Stormwind falls to the Horde, ending the first war. The survivors of what? Stormwind flee north to Lordaeron, where Anduin Lothar convinces the other kingdoms to assist. Together, they begin to plan a second war against the Horde and unite into the alliance of Lordaeron. Meanwhile, Doomhammer's Horde marches north from Stormwind towards Ironforge to get resources. What is going on on the other continent, though? Oh shit, I'm kind of blocking. But what is going on on the other continent? They're just like having all these wars on this one. The Horde fights the dwarves and gnomes, leaving them trapped in their cities. The Horde continues north towards Lordaeron, but it's too well defended, so they head past it and poke at the High Elves and Quell Philos for a bit before turning around. Gul'dan betrays the Horde and leaves for a tomb of Sargeras with some soldiers. Funny betrays Sargeras and ignores orders to open a portal, instead planning to steal the power of a tomb for himself. Sargeras doesn't like being betrayed, so demons eat Gul'dan. Orgrim yeah. Doomhammer is unaware of Gul'dan's desertion and begins a siege of Lordaeron. Originally successful, Doomhammer had been counting on Gul'dan's forces to bolster the assault, and when he learns they have abandoned the Horde, he's forced to undergo an incredibly costly retreat to Black Rock Mountain. Unaware that Gul'dan is already dead, Doomhammer dispatches the sons of a former warchief Blackhand, Dalrand and Mame, along with a contingent of orcs to slay Gul'dan. The pursuing human forces free the besieged dwarves and gnomes who pledge their service to the Alliance. The severely weakened Horde makes their final stand at Black Rock Mountain. Orgrim Doomhammer kills Anduin Lothar to break the human spirits, only for him to be replaced by the Paladin Turalyon, who captures Doomhammer and rallies the Alliance into pushing the Horde back through the Dark Portal. Khadgar deactivates the portal, closing the gateway between Azeroth and Draenor and ending the Second War. Rend, Maim, and their contingent of orcs arrives at Black Rock Mountain after the Alliance departs and occupy the fortress for themselves. Fortifying the keep from attackers, they create the cool new Dark Horde and the secret ingredient is dragons. The victorious Alliance rebuilds Stormwind, naming the adolescent son of Lane Wren, Varian, as king. The Alliance also puts the orcs they captured into internment camps. Orgrim himself is sent to one such camp. The High Elves, feeling that the protection of Lordaeron was prioritized over their capital, Quelphalas, leave the Alliance. Back on Draenor, the orc shaman Ner'zhul finds himself leading the remnants of the Horde on a still-dying world. He plans to open portals to other planets to plunder their resources, because it worked so well last time. But to do this, he needs to steal magical artifacts from Azeroth, so he reopens the Dark Portal, great work, Khadgar, and sends a small group of soldiers through to retrieve the artifacts. They succeed, but the Alliance decides to go on the offensive, electing to send a group of soldiers led by Turalyon, Khadgar, and some other people into the Dark Portal in order to end the Horde once and for all. Corrupted by the power of the artifacts, Ner'zhul opens a massive number of portals at once, tearing apart the fabric of Draenor and abandoning the Horde. The planet is destroyed and pulled into the Twisting Never, forming a floating landmass called the Outlands. In order to save Azeroth from the might of the now-stranded Horde, Khadgar collapses the Dark Portal, trapping himself in the Alliance expedition in the Outlands. Presumed dead, statues of the leaders of the expedition are erected in the newly rebuilt Stormwind. Angered by Ner'zhul's betrayal of the Horde, Kil'jaeden turns him into an evil hat and a sword called Frostworm that have the power to raise the dead. Then he drops him on Azeroth in order to weaken the human kingdoms in preparation for a Legion invasion. He also gives Ner'zhul a few demons called Dreadlords to help speed things along. In New Yorkish internment camps, a young orc named Thrall befriends Doomhammer, and together they rally the orcs into rebellion and escape the camps. They build a cool new Horde, and the secret ingredient is friendship, but Orgrim <laughs> is killed, naming Thrall the new warchief. Oh. Thrall leads the orcs to the lost continent of Kalimdor in order to escape the humans. During the voyage, they meet with the Darkspear trolls and Matoran, both of whom join the Horde. Ner'zhul, now called the Lich King, has had a few years to get ready, and he's oh. starting to build a following. He needs powerful magic boys to open a big portal, so he recruits the wizard Kalpazad, and together they make a plague that kills people and turns them into zombies. They release it into the northern cities of Lordaeron via shit. infected grain and the third war begins. Oh, King wow. Terranus okay. Metaphil of Lordaeron hears rumors of a plague to the north and sends his son Arthas and the mage Jaina Proudmoore to investigate. They find that Kalfazad has poisoned a recent grain delivery to the bustling city of Stratholme with a plague. Why are all these mage girly pops blonde and wearing like the same armor? This looks exactly like the guardian lady earlier. I need more lady diversity, please. Arthas kills Kalfazad and they head to Stratholme to stop a grain shipment. <laughs> the duo is too late to stop the townsfolk from eating the grain and with no cure for a plague, Arthas decides to kill the infected she before they turn into here. mindless undead. Jaina is aghast and abandons Arthas. Arthas purges the city and meets the dreadlord Malganus, who taunts the prince, telling him to find him in Northrend. Arthas becomes obsessed with taking revenge on Malganus and follows him to Northrend, discovering the sword Frostmourne along the way. The sword consumes his soul, and Arthas is corrupted by the will of the Lich King, oh. becoming an undead soldier called a Death Knight. Oh. Now minion of the Lich King, Arthas returns to Lordaeron and murders his father, King Terranus Menafil, while his forces destroy the city. The Lich King still needs Kelphazad to summon Archimon, so he orders Arthas to stuff the dead wizard chunks in a jar. In order to raise Kelphazad as a lich, Arthas needs the power of the Sunwell, so he marches his forces north to Kelphalas. Along the way, he captures the Ranger General of Silvermoon, Sylvanas Windrunner, who he kills and raises as a banshee. 
The Scourge Storm Silvermoon and Slaughter of the High Elves, raising Kalfazad as a witch and corrupting the Sunwell in the process. With Kalfazad resurrected, the Scourge returns south and raid the city of Dalaran for a magic book. Once they have it, Kalfazad summons Archimond, who builds a sand castle and punches it, which destroys Dalaran. Remember that second well of eternity Illidan made in Hyjal? Archimond needs it to summon the Legion, so he and the gang head west to Kalimdor. Also, a big tree called the World Tree grew in it, and it made the elves immortal. Jaina and Frawl are both met by the ghost of Medivh, who says they need to stop Archimond at Mount Hyjal or Azeroth will be destroyed. Jaina leads the Alliance to Kalimdor. On Kalimdor, the spooky Medivh ghost meets Jaina and Frawl again and tells them that the Alliance and Horde need to work together. But one group of orcs under Gromash Hellscream gets tricked by Manoroth into drinking more demon blood and becomes servants of a burning legion again. Jaina frees Grom, who kills Manoroth, freeing the orcs but killing himself in the process. The Night Elves find out that the Legion is invading again and join the fight. Tyrande, now the leader of the Night Elves, orders Illidan to be released from jail to help fight demons. Illidan promises he's done consuming demonic power to stop the Legion. Illidan then promptly consumes more demonic power to stop the Legion, <laughs> eating the skull of Gul'dan and using the powers to blow up a Dreadlord. Tyrande and Malfurion are furious and banish Illidan, who runs off the sulks. The Ghost of Medivh tells everyone that he's manifesting because he feels bad for opening the Dark Portal and wants to fix his mistake. The three armies pledge to stop the Legion and build a series of base camps in Mount Hyjal to prevent Archimond from reaching the well. Archimond completely- Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay. Digesting. Digesting. Okay, so right now, the Alliance and the Horde are, like, working together to, like, fight the Leech King, right? Because they're like, fuck, like, Leech King can, like, turn either of any of us into, like, his army. Right? What happened to the... to the super powerful, like, evil dude that imprisoned all the Titans? He had a part of his spirit in the Guardian... She transferred to her son. The son died and is now a ghost somehow. He's leading what army? He was a part of the Alliance, but he betrayed them. They're fighting the Burning Legion now? Holy shit. <laughs> Wait, who the fuck is the bur- <laughs> The Legion is from, like, the evil space dude that, like, doesn't know where Azeroth is, right? The Burning Legion, though? Oh, Jesus. The demons in space from the beginning. Okay. For fighting huge enemies like the Legion, but they always go back to fighting each other. Evil space dude, Burning Legion. Is that Sargoros? Is he, like, the leader of the Burning Legion? I, I Okay, I feel like I'm following this, like, de decently well. Okay, okay. I just need to have these, like, breaks, bro. <laughs> I need to give my, my brain a little bit to settle. Okay, but now I have an understanding of, like, why all the races, I feel like, are a part of the Alliance or Horde at this point, though, so. He bulldozes through these base camps and reaches the well, so the ancient spirits of the Night Elves oh, called yeah. Reaching the Well. Archimond completely bulldozes through these base camps and reaches the well, so the ancient spirits of the Night Elves called Wisps turn themselves into a bomb and blow Archimond and his army up. They also accidentally blow up a world tree, so the Night Elves stop being immortal, but at least the Third War is over. Frawl heads south into the deserts of Kalimdor and founds the Horde capital of Orgrimmar, named after Orgrim Doomhammer. In the ruins of Kalfloss, Prince Kalfast Sunstrider destroys the Sunwell so it doesn't corrupt his people. Without the Sunwell, the High Elves go into magic withdrawal and most rename themselves to the Blood Elves. About 10% continue to call them themselves High Elves and break off to rejoin the Alliance. This schism becomes the single largest point of contention among the WoW player base. Illidan, still angry about- Wait, what? Wait, so you used to be able to play as a High Elf in the game? Damn. ...being accused of serving demons, agrees to serve Kill Jaden by hunting down and killing the Lich King, who's gone rogue. He teams up with some Naga and Prince Kalfas and casts a spell which severely injures the Lich King. Ner'zhul the Hat realizes that unless someone puts him on, he will die from his injuries, so he recalls Arthas to Norfriend. The Alliance rallies under Grand Marshal Garifos to push the undead out of the ruins of the Kingdom of Lordaeron, now called the Plaguelands. Due to the Lich King being weakened, Sylvanas breaks free from his control and works alongside them to retake the capital city. However, once the Scourge is defeated, she turns on her living allies and slays them. Claiming Lordaeron for herself, she unites the undead freed from the Lich King's control into the Forsaken. Arthas leaves Kalfazad to command the remaining Scourge in the Plaguelands and returns to Norfriend. Illidan battles Arthas in a final attempt to prevent him from saving the Lich King, but Arthas wins and puts on the hat, merging his soul with Ner'zhul and being frozen in a block of ice. Illidan retreats through a portal to the Outlands with Kalfas and some of the Naga. Fearing the Alliance will attempt to retake Lordaeron from her, Sylvanas and the Forsaken join the Horde, hoping their military might will deter the Alliance. The Horde now consists of Orcs, Tauren, Trolls, and Forsaken. With the loss of Lordaeron- Damn. Okay, suddenly I'm liking the Forsaken more, knowing they're being led by this, this baddie Sylvanas. The recently rebuilt city of Stormwind becomes the new seat of the Alliance, which consists of humans, dwarves, gnomes, night elves, and a few remaining high elves. The city of Dalaran gets rebuilt and they put it under a dome. A night elf named Fandral Staghelm decides to grow a new world tree called Teldrassil so the night elves can keep being immortal. It doesn't work, but the night elves decide to live on it anyway. While traveling to a diplomatic meeting with the Horde, King Varian Rin is kidnapped. His ten-year-old son, Anduin, is named leader of Stormwind, with Bolvar IV Dragon acting as regent lord. 
Horde. This marks the beginning of World of Warcraft. Ah. The armies of the Horde and Alliance have been greatly weakened by the Third War, so both factions begin to recruit new soldiers from among their citizens to depopulate the local wildlife. These citizens become known as the Champions of Azeroth and are the player characters in WoW. In Black Rock oh. Mountain, Ragnaros starts summoning elementals, so the Champions of the Horde and Alliance banish him back to the Firelands. Then they go upstairs and kill Rend Blackhand. On Kalimdor, Cthulhu and all the bugs break out of jail, so the Alliance and Horde build a stick and use it to break into bug jail to kill Cthulhu. We can kill old gods, but the Titans can't because reasons. Off in the Outlands, Illidan and Kalfast steal a floating chandelier ship called Tempest Keep. Velen and the surviving Jirnai steal a piece of it and fly off into space. Kalfazad builds a big floating box called Noxramus that he's ruling the Plaguelands from. The champions of Azeroth break in and kill him. The remaining demons in the Outlands reopen the Dark Portal in order to invade Azeroth. They are beaten up immediately and Azeroth decides to invade the Outlands to teach him a lesson. This marks the beginning of the Burning Crusade. Kalfast discovers that Fel Energy is a substitute for his Sunwell and joins the Legion. Blood Elves start doing Fel Magic and their eyes turn green. Some are upset about this and join the Horde, but rest continue to follow Kalfast. The Jirnai crash land on Azeroth and join the Alliance because it's the side that doesn't have orcs. The Alliance find Khadgar, Kurd, and a troll- Wait. Wait, they, they, Okay, hold on. The, I remember these guys, they were like sharing a planet with the orcs and then the orcs turned green because they drank the Legion shit and now they're like, they fucking hate the orcs, okay. Valid, valid. Crash land on Azeroth and join the Alliance because it's the side that doesn't have orcs. The Alliance <laughs> find join. Khadgar, Kurd, and a Trollbane alive and operating in the Outlands. Illyria Windrunner and General Turalyon are still missing. For all meets Garrosh Hellscream, the son who Gromosh Hellscream left behind on Draenor. The two become friends and Garrosh joins the Horde. The champions of Azeroth beat up Illidan and send him to jail. Then we beat up Kalfast and he gets really big and dies. Kalfast gets resurrected with fell magic and decides to use the Sunwell to summon Kill Jaden to Azeroth. The Alliance and Horde lay siege to the Sunwell, killing Kalfast again and stopping Kill Jaden before he can enter Azeroth. Velen purifies the Sunwell by throwing a dead chandelier into it so what elves don't die of withdrawal. This marks the end of a burning crusade. In Northrend, Malagos gets mad about how much magic people are using and decides no more magic for anyone. He begins to slurp up all the magic on Azeroth, which angers the Kirin Tor of Dalaran, since without magic, wizards are just frail nerds. They teleport Dalaran to the skies above Northrend and team up with the other dragon aspects in order to fight Malagos. Varian Rin is rescued funny. and returns to Stormwind to take his place as High King of the Alliance. The new and improved Witch King Arpus wakes up and decides to conquer Azeroth. He sends infected grain to the capital cities of the Alliance and Horde, which kills some citizens but mostly just angers the two factions, who team up and send an expedition to Northrend to stop the Witch King. They're joined by the Argent Crusade, a group of paladins devoted to stopping the undead. Some of Arpus's Death Knights rebel and join the Alliance and Horde. The Witch King resurrects Kelfazad again and moves Noxramus to Northrend in order to fight the Argent Crusade. Kelfazad is killed almost immediately. Also, the dragons kill Malgos, who he stops eating all the magic, and another dragon named Klekos replaces him as the aspect. Some of the Forsaken betray everyone and release a plague on a bunch of Alliance and Horde soldiers, including Bolvar Four Dragon. Alex Straza tries to save him by setting him on fire, with questionable results. Yogg Saron wakes up inside of Ulduar, so the champions of Azeroth kill him before he drives everyone insane. The Argent Crusade hosts a big joust to decide who gets to kill the Lich King. The winners get to storm Ice Crown Citadel. It's discovered that the charred but still alive Bolvar is being held by Arthas. Led by the High Lord of the Argent Crusade, Tyrion Forgering, the best jousters in Azeroth march on Ice Crown Citadel and kill the Lich King, shattering Frostmourne in the process. The spirit of King Tyrannus Menafil is released from Frostmourne and tells Tyrion that someone needs to put on the evil hat or the undead will start killing everyone. A walking charcoal briquette that is Bolvar calls dibs and becomes the new Lich King, getting frozen in a block of ice. The War of the Lich King ends. Remember Deathwing? The old gods have been whispering to him for 10,000 years, so he's even crazier than before, and he just woke up on the wrong side of a bed and broke out of deep home, oh. blowing up a lot of Azeroth in the process. Now everything is on fire, and Fantasy Utah got flooded. The King of the Dwarves, Magni Bronzebeard, tries to research how to stop Deathwing from blowing up Azeroth, and accidentally turns himself into a giant diamond. Now Ironforge doesn't have a king, and the three dwarf clans fight over who should lead. They wind up deciding to just make a council. Gilneas gets oh. overrun by a furry convention of a Forsaken invade and try to plague them. The Alliance shows up to help, but Sylvanas destroys Gilneas anyway. The wolves want revenge, so they rejoin the Alliance invade and try to plague them. The Alliance shows up to help, but Sylvanas destroys Gilneas anyway. The wolves want revenge, so they rejoin the Alliance. A bunch of goblins that live on an island almost die in a storm, but Frawl saves them, so they join the horde. The dragon aspects team up to stop Deathwing, but they can't form Captain Planet without the aspect of rocks, so they recruit Frawl because he's good at talking to rocks. This means Frawl has to retire from the horde, so he appoints Garrosh as the new war chief. Deathwing decides he isn't burning things fast enough, so he summons Ragnaros, who has legs now. The druids storm into the Firelands to keep Ragnaros from burning down their trees and kill him for real this time. The Aspects realize they can't stop Deathwing without using the Dragon Soul, so Nazdormu goes back in time and steals it. Then Frawl blows him up. Using the Dragon Soul to blow up Deathwing used up all the Dragon Aspects' power, so they aren't as powerful anymore. The Cataclysm ends. Garrosh likes war, so he decides to start one by blowing Whoa, bro, where did the time-traveling dragon come from? Where? What do you mean? What do you mean he just went back in time and stole it? Uh. <laughs> I think high elves kind of become blood elves. Yeah, I think like some shit happens to them. Because there's no high elf option. <laughs> um, I mean, this shit's crazy as hell. We're almost to the end though, y'all. This shit is crazy as hell though. 
Let me check on. <gasps> it says two minutes, guys. Oh my god, wait. It says less than a minute. Hold on, hold on. Wait. Do we still watch? Do we finish? Well, I just want to make sure. Do I have to, like, accept it as soon as, like, I get in? The time-traveling dragon pretty much always just looks like a gnome girly. Oh, really? Okay, shit. Um... I want to make sure that I, I am able to pay attention. I kind of do want to be undead, though, now. Like, now that I know more of the lore, I feel like the undead seems cooler. I, they didn't even get into, like, the Tauren or anything. They were just like, oh, like, the Tauren, they just live here or something. They, like, I don't know. You saw, oh, Chromie. You saw Chromie retail. She let you pick which expansion you do? Oh, really? Oh, my goodness. Undead suits you well. What does that mean? Is that like a diss? Can you like elaborate on what the hell you mean by that? The Tauren aren't a big part of the overall story. Oh. Then I feel like if like Season Discovery is kind of more about diving into the story that I should do the undead then, right? What y'all think? What y'all think? Um, I don't know. Anyone that plays... Is the storyline for Torin like still interesting or is like the undead better? Um Undead are the cool people of the story right now. I mean Sylvanas looked like a baddie, so that's enough to get me to sign up. Dude, you're such a goofy hour. I'm i I'm getting so goofy. Actually, I'm about to get so I'm about to get so goofy. We've been waiting in this queue for an hour and a half, so. We about to get so goofy right now. The Torrin are cow people, Native Americans, not much story. <laughs> Torrin's story is pretty basic. All right, I guess we should do undead. Plus I could be sexy if I'm undead and like that's obviously a huge, huge, huge bonus. Okay, but what class? What class? Should I play warlock again? Or should I do mage? I thought the mage healing, like that mages could heal. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I mean, she is a baddie. I need more. I don't know much about, like, the the lore. I guess, okay, I will say, maybe in this way, I feel like when I was playing, like, when we were just playing, like, hardcore classic, I would just focus on leveling. Oh my god! Ah! Sorry. Hold on, let me, wow, let me relax for a second. Oh, my bad. Okay, I was just way too excited right there. 